Hey guys, uh, today's video is gonna be all about Google. All right, what I wanna do is focus on Google a little bit. I'm gonna break down the different parts of the actual, what's called the SERP, the S-E-R-P, the Search Engine Results page. A lot of people don't understand what the different sections of that SERP, the whenever you Google a keyword term is. I wanna break that down for you guys very simply and clearly. So what I've done is I've taken a lot of the questions that we get um, throughout the last couple weeks about Google, about search engine optimization, about pay-per-click, mm -hmm. and I've uh, compiled some screenshots to just kind of go through and just do one quick video on all the different sections of the Google page, okay? So I'm gonna start with this first screenshot, all right? Uh, Dylan's gonna pull it up for us. Um, I use the keyword final expense insurance, and I wanted to break down just really quickly that first initial um, sort of what you see whenever you Google that keyword term. So if you notice that green a little thing that says add on the side of it, what that is is that's the um, pay-per-click advertising that you essentially pay Google per click. You don't pay just to be on the list, you only pay when individuals actually click on that um, as well. So Google pay-per-click, in my opinion, is to be used only when you have a healthy budget. Um, in general, you wanna kinda stay away from Google uh, pay-per-click unless you have at least $1,000 a month of actual hard spend. The main reason you want to uh, kind of set the cap at that thousand dollars a hard spend is because the way Google works is every time you click, you take away from a budget, and so what you do is you set up daily budgets. So if you have less than a thousand dollars a month, your daily budgets are too small to be able to really compete. If you notice um, at the top of that, it looks like the average cost per click for this particular keyword is twenty three dollars and fifty six cents, which means as a final expense individual insurance agent, we should probably stay away from that specific keyword because there's lots of big companies that are bidding up that keyword basically because Google is just a giant auction. So how you get into that list is you do pay-per-click. I wouldn't recommend you guys dabbling in, in the pay-per-click without working with the Google partner like we are um, and being able to like work with an expert because you know bidding on these keywords that are you know final expense insurance and, and super basic um, is what all the big dogs are doing, and so it's just too expensive for us to play ball, all right? Um, one of the things that I wanna break down as well is um, if you look at the uh, the next screenshot that I pulled up is, is Google Maps, okay? So I want you to notice on Google Maps, some of you guys may not have noticed, that there's actually an ad at the top of Google Maps. What, that, what I'm trying to break down is, is Google actually has an ad type where we can put an ad in Google Maps when someone's looking for the keyword that we want to make sure that you're always at the top of Google Maps. You got a big red you know, pin there and that you're always being seen. So some people don't even realize that you can do that. So this works a lot with property and casualty, um, you know, insurance offices that really want to dominate a local market. Um, that is really a good fit for these individuals because sometimes these ad types are not being utilized in a local market and national companies can't really bid on, well they can, but it's difficult for them to bid on the actual local Google map ad type. So there's a lot of low hanging fruit if you wanna just play ball um, and buy those keywords and use that ad type that's on the actual Google Maps itself. Um, the next thing I wanna break down is, if you look at the next screenshot, I use the keyword final expense insurance, okay? How many of you guys have heard how important search engine optimization is? Well. Search engine optimization is, is instead of paying per click like I've just went through, now we're gonna create content and give Google enough content to consider us a relative you know, website for the keyword that was being searched with enough authority to be found on this list. Now, one of the things I wanna show you, you guys may have seen, people also ask section, okay? What that is, is Google has basically said, here's the keyword that's searched. This people also ask section, if you click on those little down arrows, it's basically just additional information that is teaching about the content that um, the keyword was being searched. So if the keyword search was final expense insurance, this people all, all also ask is more of like an informative uh, place where Google places content. Now, most of these actual content pieces and the people always ask are blog posts. Um, so if you create an excellent blog post in your area, there's a high chance that you're actually going to get on that list. If you're developing blog content, you're doing search engine optimization, you can earn your way into that spot. So what that means is, is that we can actually you know, create content. That's where a lot of organic traffic comes from. That's from this particular section. So what will happen is, is you, know, you may be um, shown as like a people also ask section, blog post, etc. They click into that. Before you know it, they're on your website with several different 
you know, blogs that they're reading, you're the one educating them, then they fill out your lead form that's on your website. That's why blogging is so important. It does take time, you know, six months, eight months to actually see some results on search engine optimization, but that's one of the ways that you do it. Another thing that I could show you if you continue to do a search engine optimization, you build out your blog feed and you build out your content, is I can go to Google Analytics and show you what the top performing pages of your website are in terms of how many people are getting to your website. And on that list, if you blog enough and you create enough content consistently, you will see that in your top 20 pages of people finding your website, your homepage will be your first, you know, your you know, services will probably be your second. But in that top 20, you will see blog posts and blog content that's in that top 20 uh, pages being visited. And that means that you're you know, on these snippets across the country somewhere. That's how, if you guys have ever heard of like insurance agents driving passive leads through search engine optimization, it's because they're building out a content and structuring it the correct way to get on these types of things with Google and not have to pay per click, all right? The next thing I wanna show you is a spreadsheet. I might use a different keyword this time. This was um, homeowner's insurance agent Springfield Mo. okay? So I broke down, I, I, wanted, I actually spelled it in two words um, on purpose. Um, just to kind of show you that this particular keyword is, you know, because it's separated home-owners insurance agent uh, Springfield Mo, people are actually searching that keyword very often. In fact, um, or they're just basically searching this, this keyword as well. And I want to focus on the right section, which is Millennium Brokers Insurance. Now, they're not a client. I don't know who these guys are. Particularly, I just did a keyword search. And I want to show you this section on the right is what's called Google My Business. Google My Business is essentially like, pretend like it's like your yellow book page of 2019, okay? If you wanna own the keyword and if you're owning that keyword for homeowners insurance spaced out, et cetera, then not only does he, this guy, Millennium Brokers, if you look, he's number one on the Google search engine results page under the people always ask, also ask, um, and he's number one. So he's number one and number two on the actual list and he has Google My Business. So this guy is dominating this actual page, I'd be willing to bet that this guy gets passive leads out the yin yang, you know, to basically, you know, fuel some inbound calls because he's not only number one on Google, he's number two on Google and he owns the Google My Business section. So you've got to make sure that you set up this Google My Business the correct way. There's a whole process to go through with what's called directory listing management. Um, Google My Business is one directory listing, Yahoo, Bing, Yelp, Facebook, you know, even YouTube accounts are connected as well. So if you can set up all your directory listings specific to your specific area, then you actually get go a long way with Google to get owning this actual Google My Business section on the right, all right? The next thing I wanted to show you is what I call like a little bit of a, uh, let's call it like a secret hack of the insurance industry world if you wanna drive inbound calls, okay? This spreadsheet, I specifically looked for a, a keyword called all state quote. Now, the reason I chose all state quote was because how many commercials do we see of Allstate um, throughout you know, basketball games or whatever it is? Well, what happens is, is people that are consuming these TV you know, shows or whatever, they have their laptops or their phones in front of them, and if their premium just increased and they just saw an Allstate quote or an Allstate commercial and whatever, for whatever reason, it spurred their memory to try and say, you know what, maybe I'll just have them quote or, or whatever. So I wanna notice something very interesting. The number one result for Allstate quote is what? It's State Farm, okay? So State Farm is trying to basically steal the traffic that Allstate is essentially generating and they're gonna do it because they're number one and Allstate's number two, right? Now, let me give you a secret. If you're a local Allstate agent or a local State Farm agent, you can also buy that keyword and it's gonna be cheaper than what it would be for Allstate or State Farm to buy it because they're doing these nationwide campaigns with millions of dollars a month of ad spend and they're kind of blanketing the country and they're saying if John, in Springfield, Missouri, doesn't bid on this keyword, we'll take it for pennies on the dollar. Well, if John comes in and buys that keyword, then he gets the phone call, not Allstate, or not State Farm, and not the, the Allstate lead generating tool that may go to a local Allstate office, not you, right? Now, um, the last thing I wanna show is I did a Google search for State Farm insurance quote on my cell phone and took that screenshot. So the first thing that you see is an ad, obviously, that's State Farm, but I wanna point out down here, it says call 417-725-2621 or whatever, okay? What this is called is, this is whenever someone Googles a keyword on their cell phone. These are called mobile click-to-call ads. Now, what can happen is, is it makes it really easy for a user to you know, do, do a Google search, click their phone, and then call right away and get that phone call. Well, Google has built a campaign type for us 
to only pay when someone actually dials their phone number, okay? So you're not paying per click for website traffic, you're only paying per call, right? So right now in this situation, um, State Farm is number one, but you notice that um, down here, DougBakerInsurance.com, he's a State Farm office and he was savvy enough to buy that keyword. So instead of this user that's looking for a State Farm insurance quote, going to State Farm's sort of overall website and then hopefully funneling down to, uh, what's this guy's name, Doug Baker. Doug Baker is gonna get that direct call instead of State Farm choosing who to send that to. Do you see what I'm saying? So we can buy phone calls that way. The best part about the um, that program is that you can actually get a download list of all the spread of spreadsheet of who's called so you can kind of track your ROI. It's really accountable. Um, I will tell you, you need a little bit of heavier of a budget to be able to play ball on the whole paper call, paper click kind of thing. You need at least a thousand, fifteen hundred a month, at least um, of actual ad spend. So, those are some little tricks. You know, one of the things that I want to kind of communicate with this type of um, marketing is that it's called what's called like lower funnel traffic with higher buyer intent. Okay, what I mean by that is someone that's googling, um, you know, State Farm insurance quote. Don't you think that they're looking? to quote something, okay? Obviously, they're in the in the mode of looking for an actual quote. That would be a better lead or prospect than someone that fits our geographic, fits our demographic. We put a marketing message in front of them. We, we hope that they react to that marketing message. That's also great as well. That's done by Facebook, Instagram, you know, social media, et cetera. Great marketing. I'm not saying it's bad, but Google is what's called the bottom funnel traffic, which is these guys are ready to get a quote done as opposed to Facebook, which is, hey, you could be ready for a quote, you fit my demographic and my market, let's see if I can entice you to get, let me quote you. These guys are already going to Google to look for someone to quote something. Most likely it was a premium increase or an, uh, some type of life change event that causes them to you know, question their insurance agents, you know, customer service, et cetera, whatever that looks like. So you know, I just wanna kind of break down that Google, in my opinion, is a little bit heavier of a lift. It needs to be more of a it's kind of more of an advanced, I would say, product because you can burn through budget quick and your ROI is great, but you need a bigger budget for about 90 days to really be able to you know, determine you know, your return on investments, et cetera, as opposed to social media where that game is like lower um, risk, you know, quicker reward, but lower quality leads. So if you wanna kind of work towards the higher end scale of the buyer intent, which is something that you'll hear me talk about if you listen to any of, of what we're doing with marketing. You know, Google is on the higher end of buyer intent, but it's also more expensive. So I would say Google would be for the more mature agency, the more mature agent that has a marketing budget developed or is already doing Google AdWords and doesn't really hear from their Google AdWords guy. One of the things that I can help you do is I can actually audit that account. And I can, if you just give us access to your actual AdWords account, I can go in and kind of look and figure out where you're wasting money. If you are wasting money, give you a full report of what percentage I think I can drop your cost per lead um, that way. So um, thanks for taking the time to, to learn a little bit about Google. I'll do more videos on Google, but this was just sort of my first go of some screenshots that I feel like could help you guys out because we get a lot of questions on this stuff. So thanks for paying attention. And if you need any questions or want us to do an audit on your AdWords account or whatever that looks like, just head over to secureagentmarketing.com and just fill out a little form and we'll get in touch and we'll figure it out. Thank you.